story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. The people like things big, and that's the way they build them. Super highways. Big parks. Supermarkets. And big buildings. Most of the people do big things. Few of them are pretty small. They're my business. I'm a cop. It was Tuesday, January 18th. It was raining in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of homicide detail. My partner's Frank Smith. My name's Friday. We found a 25-year-old unidentified man hiding in a freight car. In his arms, he held the body of a dead woman. The victim's identity was unknown. The suspect refused to tell us anything. We had to start at the beginning. I checked with the R&I division to see if we could find a record on the man. Son, it's just a matter of time. You're going to have to tell somebody sooner or later. Why won't you tell us now? What do you say? Look, son, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't get the reasoning behind all this. We know there's nothing wrong with you. We know you can talk all right. You talked to the officers in the radio car who brought you in. You know as well as I do you're going to have to explain what's happened. You're going to have to explain that dead body. Now, do you want to get it over with? Look, Gordon, if you didn't kill the woman, you haven't anything to worry about. And if you did, we're going to find out anyway. Who was the woman, Gordon? Will you tell me that much? What's her name? Did you know her very long? Gordon? What was she to you? Do you want to tell me that? Now, she's a fairly middle-aged woman in her early 50s, I'd say. Is that about right? Was she mother, Gordon? Older sister, maybe. Any relation at all? What's the matter, son? You feeling sick? No? How about a cigarette? Bother you if I smoke? I hope you haven't got the idea that we're trying to trick you in anything, Gordon, here. We've got a dead woman on our hands. We've got to find out why she's dead. Now, what do you say? There's no use looking at the clock, son. We're stuck here till we find out about that woman. That goes for both of us. Homicide Friday. Oh, yeah, Jack. No, no, not right now. Ought to be back in about a half an hour. Right. Yeah, I'll tell him to call you. Right, bye. Okay, here's all we know about it. One of our radio cars, 1A4, answered a call from the night watchman down in the freight yards. He told the officers he'd spotted a man wandering around down near the far end of the train yards near the west gate. Watchman only saw him at a distance, but he said he could make out the man had a woman with him. She must have been either sick or she had too much to drink because the man appeared to be dragging her along with him. Now, the two of them disappeared behind a line of boxcars on the siding. When the watchman went to look for the two people, he couldn't find them called the radio car, and when the officers got there, they started searching. They finally found you hiding back in the corner of an empty boxcar. You were holding the dead woman in your arms. 
There wasn't anything the officers could see that might have caused the woman's death. There were no marks on the body, nothing visible anyway. And when they tried to question you, all you'd tell them was your name and that you didn't want to live. You didn't care what happened to you. Now, that's about the size of it, Gordon. Did I leave anything out? Gordon? Yeah, maybe there is something else. From what we could gather, the dead woman had been doing some drinking before she died. Matter of fact, looks like she was a pretty heavy drinker. Another thing, we know you and the woman got into the train yard down by the west gate. We know that you dragged her body across the freight yard to that boxcar they found you hiding in. The marks from her shoes lead from the sidewalk through the dirt directly to the door of that boxcar. We could see where you dragged your body from the door back to the corner of the car. Now, that's the whole story so far, Gordon. You want to fill in the rest? Who is the dead woman? All right, how about these items we found in your pocket, Gordon? This address book here. Is this the woman's name in here? This handkerchief with a lipstick on it. Were you out with another girl tonight? Were you, son? If you were, it might help us if you tell us who she is. You hear me, son? How about this lady's ring you had in your pocket? Name Elizabeth engraved on the inside. Does that tie in at all? Come on, Gordon. Who's a belong to? Homicide, Friday. Oh, yeah, Frank. You got an ident on her? Mm hmm. H O double F M A N? Yeah. Two N's. Yeah, I got it. You're going right out there now, huh? Okay. Take her down with you, huh? Right? Yeah, let me hear from her. What? No, no, not yet. All right, yeah, sorry. That was my partner, Gordon. The officer was in here with you. They took the dead woman's fingerprints. They got her identified, son. Elizabeth Hoffman, age 52 years, music teacher. Last known address, 5473 Sixth Avenue. They're on their way out there now to check it out. Now relax, Gordon. That window doesn't lead anywhere. All right, you want to take another look at this ring? We've got a fair idea that it means something, Gordon. They examined the dead woman's hands. They know she was wearing a ring recently. Her name's Elizabeth Hoffman. Name Elizabeth engraved on the inside of this ring. Now look, we're going to get the answer sooner or later. How about it? What were you doing with this ring in your pocket? Now let me tell you, young fella. I don't know what's bothering you, but whatever it is, we're going to find it out and get it through your head. You're in a bad spot. If you're not interested in helping yourself, then neither am I. Now, the monkey's on your back. You're going to have to help scratch it off. Now, get with it. What's it all about? All right, let's have your driver's license. Come on, get it out. Gordon John Miller, 2055 Malcolm Avenue. Information, do you have a phone listing for 2055 Malcolm Avenue? Yes, ma'am, thank you. Mm-hmm. 32192. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yes, ma'am, thanks a lot. Put the phone down. Are you ready to tell us? No, I won't tell you. Any way you want it, Gordon. No, you can't call him. You can't, I won't let you. All you right, can't. take it easy, will you? They don't know, they can't tell you. Give me the phone, you Sit down. Sit down on that chair. If you won't give us the answers, we'll find somebody who will. The sooner you get it through your head, you're not here on traffic ticket, the better. You're going to stay in that chair till we get ready to book you. I'm sick of treating you like a baby. They can't tell you. They don't understand. They can't tell you. Is this the Miller residence? 2055 Malcolm Avenue? Yes, well, my name's Friday, ma'am. Police Department, Central Homicide. Yes, ma'am, Police Department. Who is this speaking, please? I see. Well, Miss Miller, are you related to a Gordon Miller? Your brother? No, 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 he's not hurt, ma'am. Nothing's wrong with him. Ma'am? Yes, he's here. We're holding him. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to come down here to the city hall. Yes, ma'am, it's important. We'd like to talk to you. Now, as soon as possible. Yeah. Well, you can get in through the Main Street entrance. No, the Main Street, M-A-I-N. On the main floor, yes. Ask for Friday. Sergeant Friday, yes, ma'am. All right. 
Thank you. Goodbye. It's your sister Lillian. She's on her way down, Gordon. It's not gonna help. She doesn't know. None of them know. Who's them? You mean your family? You shouldn't have called them. They don't know about it. They can't tell you. Why did you have to call? You know why, Gordon. We gave you plenty of chance to tell us yourself. The answers had to come from somewhere. Come on, sit down now. Be quiet. Be quiet. Hey, I got a 390 in here with a knife. What's the story? You know, she was chasing some old guy down Fifth Street with this. What are you, little lady? What's your name? What's your name? You've been drinking? Pretty tough to be out in weather like this, aren't you? What's your address, lady? Well, you'll never get out of here till you tell us. All right, come on. I'm not going to tell you anything. We got all day, lady. What do you want me to say? What do you want? It's pretty simple, Gordon. Just tell us what happened tonight. She's dead, isn't she? Elizabeth? Yes, that's right. There's nothing else to say. I killed her. Why did you kill her, son? I'm not sure. Really, I'm not. I think I felt sorry for her. I killed her, though. I know that much. You murdered the woman, but you don't know why. Yes. I keep trying to remember. I can't. It doesn't seem real. No marks on the body, Gordon. None we could see anyway. How'd you kill her? I killed her. That's enough, isn't it? I murdered her. Please don't talk anymore. I'm sorry, son. That's not even half the story. You admit you killed the woman. You won't tell us why. You won't tell us how. They wouldn't let her alone. They kept hounding her. Oh, Elizabeth. <laughs> now, come on, son. Snap out of it. That's not going to help any. Come on. Yeah. How long have you known this Elizabeth Hoffman? How well do you know her, son? I've known her for ten years. She was my music teacher. Piano. Brilliant woman. Elizabeth was a real artist. And you've been taking piano lessons from her for ten years? Yes, sir. I started with her when I was 15. I was 25 last month. I couldn't have had a more brilliant teacher. She was gifted. Elizabeth was a prodigy when she was six years old, gave concerts all over Europe. That's your profession now, Gordon, concert pianist? Not exactly. I've had a few recitals. I wasn't ready. Elizabeth believed in me, though. Always used to say I had a great future. She drank quite a bit, didn't she, Gordon? Yeah, she drank. The reason for it, though. The reason for everything. It's that way with a lot of brilliant people. They drink once in a while. Well, she drank more than that, son. She had a reason for it. Who are you to sit in judgment on her? Elizabeth was a brilliant artist, a great woman, great. One of the finest musicians in the country, a great woman. She was a drunk, a bad drunk. Now, let's face it, son, you know it as well as we do. You're a liar. She wasn't a rotten liar. Six drunk arrests in 14 months. That's what her card reads in the record bureau. Those are the only times we know of. How many can you add to it? She drank. She felt it was the only way out for her. There wasn't any other way. Now, you're talking in circles, Gordon. Now, get it straightened out, will you? You want to know why Elizabeth drank? Go and ask my family. They'll tell you. They'll tell you a lot of things if you want to believe it. What's the matter? Don't you get along well with them? I just want them to leave me alone, that's all. Just let me alone. She must have been a good friend. I knew you wouldn't understand. I was in love with Elizabeth. She was in love with me. We were going to get married. You're 25 years old, Gordon. Is that right? Yes. Elizabeth Hoffman was 52. That's what our records show. What about it? 27 years difference. It's a little unusual, wouldn't you say? What of it? Everything that's great is unusual. It's what makes it great. I loved her. Time didn't make any difference. A few years, what of it? I loved her more than any woman in the world. She meant everything. I didn't care if she drank. I didn't care if she was old. You don't stop being beautiful just because you grow old. Elizabeth was beautiful. The drinking didn't help her much. I don't care about that. I still said she loved me and I loved her. Believe me, please, I loved her. Yes, son, I believe you. Let me ask you this. Yes? All right, you say you respected her. She was talented. You were grateful to her. She was generous. She made sacrifices for you. Did everything for you she could. She loved you and you loved her and you were going to marry her. Yes. This fall, on the way to South America. Going to be married what we always wanted. Elizabeth. We've been so happy. Happy. Then why did you kill her? Joe. Yeah, Frank. See you in a minute. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you or something. I think you ought to know. Yeah. John and I checked the boarding house. The Hoffman woman was staying at. Checked her rooms. Cleaned everything in order. Mm-hmm. Miss Miller had the room next to her, so we shook his place down, too. Anything? Well, his bags are packed. Looked like he was ready to leave. Something else. Yeah. His kitchen sink, bottle of poison. January.
January 18th, 11.55 p.m. My partner Frank Smith and I continued questioning the murder suspect, 25-year-old Gordon Miller. While he freely admitted to the murder of his music teacher and fiance, 52-year-old Elizabeth Hoffman, we still were unable to get him to give us a good reason for the murder. 12.20 a.m. The interrogation went on. Remember packing your suitcases before you left the boarding house? Packing? Yes, I think I do. Elizabeth and I talked about going away for a few days, someplace out of town. I think we were going to go tomorrow. They checked both your rooms, Gordon, yours and Elizabeth Hoffman's. They found your bags packed, but there was nothing about her room that indicated that she was going away. Everything was in order. Can you explain that for us? No, I don't know. Maybe she didn't have time. Hadn't gotten around to it. I guess you found the poison, too. Yeah, that's right. I got it two days ago. We thought about it. We even wrote a letter explaining why we'd do it. Yeah. We didn't have the courage, though, neither one of us. We talked about it, decided to forget it. Now I've told you everything. There isn't anything else to say. Friday. Yeah. I don't want to see her. I don't want to see her. Please, keep her out. Keep her away. Gordon. You the boy's sister? Yes, that's right. I'm Lillian Miller. You Sergeant Friday? That's right. Step over here. Thanks, Lillian. This is my partner, Frank Smith, Miss Miller. Yes, How are you, Gordon? It's been such a long time. How have you been? Chair, Miss Miller. Oh, thank you. What is it, Gordon? What's the trouble about? Oh, honey, what is it? Won't you even look at me? Get out of here. Let me alone. Get out. Please, Gordon, don't. I'm here to help you, honey. They called me tonight. They said you're in trouble. Now, what is it? Let me help you, please. You can't help. She's dead. Now, when you go home, Elizabeth's dead. I killed her. Oh, merciful God, no. Will you take her out, Sergeant? Tell her to go. You don't know what you're saying, honey. Oh, he's not in his right mind, Sergeant. I know he's not. Oh, please, Gordon, you have to let us help you. I called Dad just before I left. He's on his way here now. We'll get a lawyer. Oh, don't worry, honey. It'll be all right. Everything will be all right. She's dead. Can you bring her back? Gordon, you couldn't have killed her. You couldn't have. You tramp, no good tramp. Gordon, please. What are you crying for? What right have you got to cry? You have to love somebody to cry for him. You hated Elizabeth. You didn't even know her, but you hated her. You and Dad, both of you. You made a hell out of her life. You made one of mine. Hounding her, torturing her. Why couldn't you let her alone? Why couldn't you let us alone? We only did it for you, Gordon. We thought it was best for you. You fool, you fool. How could you know what's best for me? You of all people. You and your two husbands, your boyfriends, the big life. I know about you, Lillian. I know about you. Say anything you want, Gordon. I don't care. But let me help you, please. Gordon, it doesn't count what I am. Just let me My help My name's you. Miller. Who's in charge here? What do you want to see? I got it, Lopez. I don't want him in here. I, I don't know him. He's not my father. All right, take it easy, Gordon. Gordon, please try and understand. We only want to help you. I'm Henry Miller. Who's in charge here? My name's Friday, Mr. Miller. This is my partner, Frank Smith. What's this thing all about? Why have you got Gordon here? What's the meaning of this? Sir? Those handcuffs on my son. Gordon, who did it? Who put him on you? I did. It was the only way we could settle him down. Taking quite a bit of authority in your hands, aren't you? Get him off him right now. No reason to handcuff him. No, I'm sorry. It can't be done. I said take him off. I have a little influence in this town. I'll see to it the police commission hears about this. What's my son doing here anyway? It's the Hoffman woman dead. Elizabeth Hoffman. What about her? She's dead. Gordon says he killed her. Dad, we've got to do something. Don't tell him anything, Gordon. Don't say a thing. I'll get a lawyer for you right away. I know what your rights are. Don't tell him anything. Did you know Elizabeth Hoffman, Mr. Miller? I knew her slightly. Can't see what this fuss is all about anyway. Woman wasn't any good to begin with. No good at all. Kept trying to get her hooks into Gordon. I tried to break it up half a dozen times. Imagine a 50-year-old woman running around with a kid like Gordon. Bum, that's all drunken bum, no good at all. You liar, you loud, ignorant liar. What? You ought to be glad I'm handcuffed to this chair. I never thought of hitting you before. I'd like to do it now. If there's only one thing I want to tell you, then get out. What's the matter with you? What are you talking about? Don't you know the position you've gotten me in? I know this much. I hate you. I hate every bit of you. You go ahead and call me your son. There's nothing I can do about that. I'll never call you my father, never in my life. Now get out. Please, Gordon, don't say those things. Try and understand. Get him out of here. Get him out of my sight. Please, Dad, he's not well. Try and understand. I hate you. I hope you never forget it. I hate you. Dad. I'll see you at home, Lily. It's the maid's night out. Lock the door for you. Go to bed. Please, Dad, we've got to help. Don't leave, Dad. Oh, dear God, dear God. Sergeant. Yeah. I'm tired. All right, Gordon, just a minute. This 
Miller, I wonder if we could step into the next office for a minute. There's something I'd like to ask you. Oh, yes, all right. You'll let me see Gordon again? Yes, ma'am. This way. This Elizabeth Hoffman, Miss Miller. Did you know her at all? Yes. Not very well, though. I only met her twice. Last time was about mm, three weeks ago. What was the occasion, Miss Miller? Can you remember? Well, I went to see her at her place. I wanted to talk to her about Gordon. See if I couldn't make her listen to reason. You wanted her to stop seeing your brother? I tried to talk to her. I even offered her money if she'd let Gordon alone. It wasn't any use. She'd been drinking. She wouldn't even listen. Kept saying she was going to marry Gordon. Well, what's the big attraction, would you know, I mean, between your brother and the woman? Well, it's hard to say. Certainly wasn't a good-looking woman. Far from it. Only one way I can figure it out. I think she flattered Gordon. Well, how do you mean? There's only one thing Gordon never really wanted. He wasn't too interested in women, things like that. All he wanted was to be a musician, a great pianist. It's all he ever wanted. The sad part about it is he'll never make it. And I think Don Deepy knows that. When he was a kid, Dad sent him to the finest teachers. After about six months, they all said the same thing. Yeah? He'd never make it. Oh, he could play well enough, but he certainly wasn't exceptional. He never improved. Just stayed the same. Then he started taking lessons from Elizabeth. She convinced him he had a great talent. Kept telling him she'd make a great pianist out of him. The last three years, she kept promising to take him on a tour. Europe, South America. It never happened. I think Gordon knew it could never happen. I see. Can you think of any reason at all why he'd want to kill her? Well, there isn't any reason. None at all. Gordon didn't kill her. He couldn't kill anyone. I'm sure of it. Well, I hope you're right, Miss Miller, for your brother's sake. Would you excuse me for a few minutes, please? Yes, sir. Right. You wait here. I'll be right back. All right. All set, Joe? Yeah, in a minute. Gordon? We ready to go? I'd like to ask you one more question, son. I'd like to have you tell me the truth. Yeah? What did you have in common with Elizabeth Hoffman? She was twice as old as you are. You gave up a lot for her. She didn't have any money. She was an alcoholic. What was the big attraction, son? Why did I love Elizabeth? Is that what you mean? That's right. You tell me, Sergeant. Why do you love any woman? Why? Because you need them. You need them. You can't be alone. Nobody can be alone. I needed Elizabeth. That's why I loved her. There's only been two women in the world who understood me. One of them was Elizabeth. The other one was my mother. She died when I was 12. Now they're both dead, both of them. Only ones who understood. Yeah. My father didn't understand. He never did. All he knows is business, making money, more money. That's why he hated Elizabeth. He was jealous. She understood me. She knew what I was like. She knew all about me. When I was with Elizabeth, I was safe. I was happy close to her. There wasn't anything to be afraid of. I'd go to her just like my mother. I'd put my head on her shoulder, and she'd put her arms around me. I wasn't frightened anymore. I was safe. Everything was all right. Like when I was a little kid in the night, I'd call out for my mother. She was always there. She'd put her arms around me and everything was safe. I wasn't afraid. I needed her. It was the same way I needed Elizabeth. Do you understand now? Do you know why I loved her? Yeah, I think I do. Only one question left. Why did you kill her? I don't know. I really don't. Maybe I'll remember. Gordon, are you sure you killed her? She died in my arms. I must have killed her. Tomorrow, maybe. Maybe I'll remember tomorrow. Is Lillian still here, my sister? Yeah, she's waiting outside. Did you hear my father, what he said? Told her to be sure and lock the door? Yeah. Just like my father. They don't have to lock that door. It was locked 13 years ago. How do you mean? It was locked the day my mother died. On January 19th, an autopsy was performed at the county morgue, city and county of Los Angeles, state of California. In a moment, the results of that examination. The results of the autopsy showed that Elizabeth Hoffman had suffered from a chronic heart condition aggravated by excessive drinking. Cause of death was listed as myocarditis, inflammation of the heart muscle.